Hello YouTube. I hope you're having a great day today. Today what I want to do is look at, um, actually I'm going to do another this in, in another book as soon as I finish this video. I'm going to do another one. What I'm going to do is actually take a look at a book I just read like last week. Um, and in the past week I just read two books. And so I'm going to review them for you. And you can kind of kind of see where my current writing reading is uh, and such. Because uh, a lot of the books, you know I'm 42, a lot of the books that I review I've written, I've read like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, back when I was a kid, something like that, or in college. Um, and so I think it's interesting to kind of also kind of track where I am currently, uh, current writing and how I came across these sort of books, why I like them, what I have to recommend. So the first of these sort of two books that I read literally in the last 10 days um, is Dream Park by Larry Niven and uh, Steve Barnes. That's the first thing I've read by, by Stephen Barnes. Um, I came across this because I do enjoy Larry Niven as a science fiction writer. Um, he is a good, solid writer. Dream Park was written in 1980 by these two. Uh, but Larry Niven is a solid writer. He's not my favorite science fiction writer. I have others, but I enjoy him. He does. He has some good, solid ideas and such. Um, and so I came across Dream Park while I was looking at some of the things that he had done that I hadn't heard of or read yet. And so I said, let's go ahead and pick it up and see what I think. Um, and so I did. Uh, and I read it and, and I enjoyed it. Um, I, I thought that the idea of Dream Park was something that really resonated with me. So when I read what it was, um, I said, yeah, I'm going to definitely pick that up. I'm sure it's going to be something I'm going to really like. And, and it is. Um, and I may go and read the rest of the series. There's actually three other books in this series after Dream Park was published. So what is Dream Park? Well, let me read to you the back of it. And if you can't figure out from the back of it if this is something that you want or not, hey, I'm probably not going to be able to sell you on it in this video anyway. So here you go. The South Seas Treasure Game campaign at Dream Park promises to be the futuristic fantasy theme park's greatest achievement. It's full of holographic attractions and the latest in virtual reality technology. A legendary game master has devised a scenario that would allow 15 players to undertake this quest. The gamers suit up to play in an artificial enclosure that has been enhanced with special effects, holograms, actors, and a clever storyline. They'll get as close as possible to living their adventure. But the fantasy is interrupted by a murder, and all evidence points to someone inside the game. So, that's here the story. It's set in the future um, at a place called Dream Park. Um, the Dream Park has, is basically kind of it's the Walt Disney of its day, it's super popular, has a number of rides, it has a lot of holographic sort of things too. Um, it's constantly sort of re-envisioning those rides. For example, it has a Cthulhu ride, it's called the Arkham Tour, um, and so forth. It has a lot of these sorts of uh, old school sort of sort of rides and such that have all these holographics um, actors and such. Um, and there is this um, Actors Hall A, that is where this one's taking place, um, and you're going to meet a lot of the characters. Um, and such. Now it does have some interesting changes in perspective. You're going to start out following about four or five characters, but then about probably about 30% of the way through, you're going to stop following all these other characters as your main characters, and you're just going to have one character for the rest of the story. Um, so there, <laughs> it's, it's going to be one of the ones that you have started with, but then you're just going to, that one's just going to be your, your main character for the rest of the story, which reads weirdly, um, especially if you're used to kind of following these different storylines and such. But as you can tell from the back, there is this murder that they are following, trying to follow and figure out which of the gamers may have committed it. So, and there's a like, so it's basically going to be kind of like a murder mystery set in a uh, in, in the Dream Park scenario, which is a future adventure park that's kind of like a role playing game. Now, because this was written in 1980, it was written after the sort of role playing games became a big thing with Dungeons and Dragons and a lot of its sort of follow ups, which came in the, you know in the early 70s. Um, and then you know the advanced Dungeons and Dragons was coming out. Lots and lots and lots of people were playing these Dungeons and these RPGs that were coming out, as well as others. So one of the things that actually kind of predicted it in here, which wasn't true at the time is live action role playing, uh, uh, a lot of the use of, of virtual reality in, in a sort of this gaming context, um, the idea of characters that are playing actors, having scripts, and such. a lot of these sorts of things are actually happening now, uh, or have happened you know, uh, uh, earlier, um, which was not a part of role playing at the time. But because role playing was big, um, the idea that this would certainly be a, a, a major part of um, our identity as a culture in decades in the future is actually a, a prediction that's also, I think, coming true too with our gaming, particular video games and such, which I think have definitely put role playing games on a modern day map um, with, with everybody being familiar with sort of what a role playing game is and such. And the idea of playing a real life RPG at a dream park 
put together by a game master who's been researching and putting it together for, for years um, uh, and such. I mean, that's obviously something that definitely would appeal, I think, to a lot of people. And having a world where game masters, are seen as, if they're good, are kind of seen as the stars of, the, of their era, I think it's also one that's pretty interesting, too. Uh, so... Following this storyline is interesting. Um, the world that's created is very, I think, very well predicted. Um, there's not a whole lot of like, of, of, none of the science fiction elements feel like they're not something that's true to Earth and something that would happen very soon. So it definitely feels like it's it's grounded really strongly in reality. Now the murder doesn't happen until about page 11, about 100 pages in. Um, and I probably and I would not have told you that in the review because typically in a review I don't like to review spoilers of major plot points that happen, especially if it's a character who's a major character in the story. But in this case, I can't not do that because it's on the back of the cover. But I think it's fine. There's still like there's still like 250 more pages left in the story after you do so. And if I'm not going to tell you in, 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 in here here in the review, but it's on the back of the cover of the book, then it's not like. It's, it's not like it's out there anyway. So just so you understand, it's, it's going to change from a fun little adventure movie to a, to a murder mystery about 100 pages in it when, when the murder happens. So just so you know, once you start reading it, you're like, oh, this is a fun story, and then boom, murder, and now it's a murder mystery. Um, so you'll, you'll be doing that too. Um, and my, there are three other books in this sort of series. My understanding is, is that all those books also have a, so a second plot that's happening that's outside the game while the gamers are playing, dealing with their sort of things um, and so forth, dealing with the issues of fighting, fighting orcs, fighting characters, fighting undead, whatever and such. So again, I'm, I'm probably going to check those out at some point in time, but I thought you would enjoy taking a look at Dream Park. Um, written in 1980, it was not a bad read. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's very Larry Niven-ish. He's a hard science fiction writer, you could tell he still is a hard science fiction writer. Um, it's a good idea, um, one that has a lot of ideas that resonate and will definitely have, have definitely come true, much like any good science fiction writer. So that's a dream park for you. Again, I just read it. Hope you enjoyed it. Please check it out in the comments below if you haven't read it. I'll give you links to it on Amazon if you want to pick it up quickly and such. It took me probably a weekend to read. Uh, Larry Niven is not uh, the fastest reader. I'm sure you... <laughs> there are a lot of science fiction writers who will just get you in and out of a story. Larry Niven is not one of them. Larry Niven will spend a lot of time building the world, building on characters, having multiple perspectives, uh, and so forth. Like Lucifer's Hammer takes a long time to read. This is The Moat in God's Eye takes a long time to read. This... It takes a long time to read. Um, it's, it took me a whole weekend. I probably spent about five or probably spent about five or six hours a day uh, reading it. So probably about a good fifteen hours uh, to get through it. Um, so just so you know, <laughs> uh, but that's fine. A lot of that's how a lot of modern novels are. So if you're reading any sort of thing that's been published in the last you know twenty years or thirty years, it's a Tom Clancy novel and, Tom, um, and so forth. It's a little, actually a little bit less, probably about ten hours less to read than a Clancy novel. But you get the idea. Um, you can probably read through it. Uh, if it, in a week, or if you put like, or two weeks, if you were to put in an hour a day or such. But anyway, Stream Park, check it out. See, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've read it, if not, please do so. Uh, if you read this, uh, if if you watch this whole video, hey, I really appreciate that you took some time out of your day. We all have busy days. We all have busy lives. So if you're taking some of your time out, spending it with me. I really do appreciate that, so thanks. If you like this, there's no reason not to hit that subscribe button. I try to unpack for you a lot of these old classics of science fiction, fantasy, horror. I also do some analyses and stuff occasionally too, uh, and talk about some some various things like my top 10 fantasy works of all time or something like that. So if you enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button. There's gonna be tons more content to follow. And thanks again.